Hey folks, my guest today is Manish Patel. He's trained in the biological dark arts of genetics, bioinformatics, and systems biology before spending some dark years in algorithmic trading teams and investment banks and hedge funds. Now he saw the light. He's co-founded a hospitality software business, a serial CTO, uh, and then took the dive recently into Jiva.ai, where he's creating multimodal AI systems. Manish, are you ready to take us to the top? Absolutely. All right. Multiple multimodal AI systems for what niche? <laughs> Basically, we want to um, target healthcare first, right? So the 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 problem with multiple with multimodal AI is that actually its application is everywhere. Wherever you look, wherever you're applying deep learning technologies to learn about complex things, complex inherent complex things inherently are difficult to understand, difficult to get patterns uh, recognized. And so we built this company in recognition of the fact that when you want to do some machine learning. Um, you don't have to have over application of Occam's razor and and you know get down to the every every sort of little vertical and learn about each little vertical. You can learn about all of them and put them all together, and that is what we call multimodal AI. So explain to me how a healthcare provider may pay you to use your tool to do things like uh, you know live monitoring, real speed of execution, you know alerts for medical staff, things like that. Sure. So there, there are a couple of ways we we provide this service. So first of all, our platform is a general purpose machine learning platform. So in the same way that you pick up Microsoft Word to, to write a document, my vision is that clinicians will pick up Jiva to, to create an AI technology, an, an AI solution for whatever, whatever they want to do. So whether you're a respiratory um, a respiratory clinician who wants to learn about COPD or COVID from CT scans, or you are a urologist who wants to learn about prostate cancer uh, from MRI scans, uh, you pick up Jiva, you plonk your data in, it tries to figure out the best model for you, and you can then use that uh, and commercialize that, get it all clinically validated and, and all that jazz. Um, we... When I first presented this idea, this was a really difficult thing for clinicians and investors to get their head around. And so we we had to kind of be our own customers. We created our own diagnostics products. We've got a prostate cancer diagnostic. We've got a liver disease diagnostic. Uh, we've previously created bone fracture diagnostics as well. Um, that is just in the diagnostic fields, but you, you know we concentrate on that because that was that was uh, the hot areas at the, at the time. Um, but you know. The, so the two things that we're doing there, obviously, then are subscription for the platform and then subscription for Manish. For what are what products. are folks what are folks paying uh, on average for subscription to the platform? So platform can be quite highly variable. If you're talking to academics R and D, that's hundreds of pounds a month. If you're talking to corporates, that's thousands of pounds a month because their requirements are just just so vastly What's your sweet different. spot though right now? If I forced you into an average, would you say two thousand bucks a month is in a good average? More three to four thousand would be three a good to average. four. Okay, interesting. Um, and and now tell me, give me the backstory here. When did you write the first line of code for the platform? What year? Two thousand and one. Oh wow, you've been at this for a while. Okay, <laughs> have you been full full time since two thousand one? No, 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 no. So um, the seed of the idea of Jiva was actually when I did my PhD. That's when I first wrote my first line of code. And actually, I wasn't even a coder. I was learning on the fly. And um, we recognized that we had to get better ways to, to simulate complex systems, simulate tumors. And that's when we started. And the ideas that we built from that project, the idea that you can merge different models together to create more representative predictors, um, uh, came from there. And that's what has been rewritten and rehashed. When did you go all in? What's the all in day? 29. So, okay. 2019 technically. Um, but we were thinking about it from 2014 onwards. I actually went part-time on my, in my roles at banks and hedge funds, um, around 2014, 2015. Um, and so that was when I was like, now nah, I, I need to go and do something more creative. And then I, I went head first into it in 2019 much to my wife's consternation because I didn't have any salary for a while. Did you have any savings? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we had we had some savings and and luckily luckily I was uh, lucky enough to work in two major banks, although one of them was Neiman Brothers. Yeah, I hear they um, pay big bonuses. So if you're operating in dark pools and hedge funds, shaving milliseconds off a trade and are doing some arbitrage, I, I bet you had some savings. There was yeah, there was a significant upside to those jobs to that job in in that respect for sure. All right, um, so 2019, you get going, and are you the sole founder? You own 100. percent 
No, we're three founders, uh, a friend of mine of 25 years, actually, a friend from university, uh, and uh, another friend uh, who is our COO. All three of us are three co-founders. Did you guys just be nice and split 33, 33, 33 at the beginning or no? No, so technically me and Chet, so we, we were 50-50 to begin with. And Sarah, we brought in because we realized we we're just administratively really rubbish. Uh, yeah. And then she, she stole a nice chunk. <laughs> What's a nice chunk? Like 10 to 20%? Yeah. yeah so in, in that order, okay. Yeah. Now, what about investors? Have you guys bootstrapped or did you raise? We bootstrapped to begin with. We, we went to friends and fools and family um, uh, to, to get our first 250-ish uh, thousand what pounds. Year? That was 2019. Okay. And uh, or, or short, shortly after we incorporated, we incorporated February 2019, six months later, got our funding, won around £400,000 in grant funding. So as you know, the UK has a really great funding program from the government, um, which is non-equity raising. And uh, then just recently closed a 1.3 million round uh, with, with uh, institutional investors. This year? This year in May. Oh, very cool. What valuation did you raise at? So that was uh, around a £4 million pound valuation. Um, Pre-money or post? Post, post, post. Okay, and so so yeah, three so point three point two pre something like that. We had to, US. yeah, we had to, yeah, we had to, we we had to skin it a little because it was, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was the time in, during COVID times that was the, that was that was kind of the situation we found ourselves in. Um, but we have, I think, I'm pleasantly, I, I I'm, I'm pretty confident that next year is going to be, uh, yeah. So you guys, you guys sold about twenty percent of the business in that round, twenty five percent, something yeah, like that. Exactly. What what cap was the pre seed at? Two hundred fifty k. Um. So yeah, it was two hundred fifty k. Yeah, pre seed, and we didn't want to go any more than that because there are certain tax rules around the IS and the SEIS funding. So we kept at two fifty. Um, and that is going to be your most expensive round, right? Your pre seed and seed are going to be your most expensive round. So we didn't want to want to go crazy on a, on a low, lower valuation, and so we did just enough and enough to enough to get to where we want to go in this year. What valuation was that? A million valuation, something like that. That was a million, yeah, free yeah, money. Yeah. Okay, so you've sold twenty five percent two or twenty percent two times, basically, is the way to look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Fair enough. But you're off the races now. How many customers are you working with? So, oh God, uh, I, I don't, I don't have the number, but at least a dozen that are um, that are or will be paying soon. Uh, in our, how pipeline. many are actually paying, Manish? Come on, you must know this number. This is like the lifeblood of the business. How many paying <laughs> customers? So zero right now. Okay. Next month, three. Okay, got it. So you have you have twelve that are basically in pilot phase, right? Yeah, what, so what do you know that they need to burn. do in pilot to convert to paid? You got to show that you got value, right? The, the number one thing is you got to show these guys that whatever you're introducing is actually having some value being driven out from 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 the introduction of this new technology. So it's a slow burn in healthcare as it is. So it's a little bit of a hard sell. But when you get there and you show them what you can do, and you can say, well, actually, look, you'll save a whole heap of ta- whole heap of cash over here, and you make a whole heap of efficiencies over here. Why don't you do that? And so we show them, they pilot it. And then they'll say, yeah, okay, we'll buy. And that's we're at that stage where we've got a number of customers saying, yeah, we'll buy. But then we're just going through the cycles. The, the so when you gave me those average contract values earlier, what were you basing those off of if you're pre-revenue today? Uh, thing in the yeah. Okay, you're just that's sort of what you think you're going to charge once they convert. Okay, yeah. so you must be very powerful at convincing investors because you raised 1.3 million at a 4.5 valuation pre-revenue, right? So what did your slides look like? Did you just use the pilots to show traction? So first of all, I'm a crappy salesperson. <laughs> I really am. Um, I, I'm a reluctant CEO. I, I I didn't want to be CEO actually. I was I was kind of uh, my chairman and my the other founders kind of forced me into it. Um, uh, and but no, I had to learn on the job. And I have great people around me. And one of the one of those people are, it, it, or actually more than one of them, is very very good at being critical about what I do uh, in terms of the deck, in terms of the way it looks, and in terms of the story that I tell. And so having those people around me to tell me how I should hone it was actually what sold it. And I, I honed that. I, I practiced it. I, I recorded myself doing a pitch a number of times, watched it over. Um, it it kind of helped that we were in COVID times because doing it in person is slightly different from doing it online. Um, but yeah, no, it was, uh, it was, there was a lot of practice involved. 
Fair enough. So you spent your COVID watching yourself give your yourself funding presentations, basically. Absolutely. That's not a bad. Yeah. Not a Can I convince use. myself? Can I convince myself to give me one one million quid? Yeah. That was that was. So how much? Yeah. How much? How much? How many months of runway does one point three million get you guys? What's your total burn today monthly? Our bur- our, our monthly burn is really low. So look, we're we're fifty k monthly burn at the moment. We'll, that's we'll all. That's to total. Our... That's total expenses or net burn. Net. What are total expenses so, all in? So so so. Is, uh, it varies because we have some regulatory work that we're doing and that's quite sporadic, but it won't go over a hundred K put it that way. Okay. So between um, 50 and a hundred, you're burning your yeah, ca- banks going down yeah. per month. So you've got at least 13 months of runway in the bank. Exactly. And we have, you know, we've got, I'm again, fairly confident that we, we, we can get more cash next year. What's the team uh, look like today? How many folks? So there, there are six people full time, six more that are part time. Some of those are actually consultants and or who actually sit on our board. And as an early stage business, I think that was a really important decision to get experience mm-hmm. rather than junior people um, uh, at the beginning. And I think that's what's actually turned the company's fortunes over the last eighteen months over COVID. Because mm. um, co- COVID is one of these times. I think I think so. I remember someone saying that if if your startup survives COVID and gets funding, then you, You've gone through an evolutionary selection process that 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 shows that you've got some resilience. Modern day Silicon Valley Darwinism is what we'll call yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I say that's exactly it. That's exactly it. So many companies failed during that time. Yeah, Manny. Well, this is good stuff. Thanks for coming on and sharing your story. Let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Oh God, um, I can't remember the name of the book, but the one that had the nice little graph with the gap. That's had uh, early Cross, crossing the chasm. Crossing the chasm. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Something. The fact that I know that based off you just saying the graph. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is, no, drawing the graph on my finger. Yeah. 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 I love it. No, J- J- Jeffrey Moore. That's a great book. Uh, number book. two. Is there a CEO you're following or studying? I, I so I just going to sound really corny, but I am following Elon Musk at the yep. moment. Not for reasons that other people might, but I, th- I think he's. Uh, I think he's a quite smart guy. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building the business? On, sorry, online tool, did you say? Yeah, the one that you use the most. Oh, Google Google, uh, Google Suite. Google Suite. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Four to five. Okay, not horrible. What's your situation? Married, single, kids? Uh, married with two kids. Two kids? Wow, you're a busy guy. All right. Um, how old are you? How old am I? 42. 42. 42. Last, yeah. last question. What's something you wish you knew when you were 20? Say so, say again. Sorry. Something you wish you knew when you were twenty. Oh, uh, how hard startups are. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, startups are hard. He's been uh, thinking about this idea since two thousand and one when he uh, when he came out of college. He he wrote the first line of code back then. Went full time twenty nineteen. They did a two hundred fifty thousand dollar pre seed round at a million dollar valuation. Did another one point three million dollar round seed four point five million post money valuation just this year. So sold twenty percent of the company two times, but has a great team. Uh, 12 customers and pilots right now hoping to move those folks into paid accounts here in the next two to three months. They're only burning caught 50 to $100,000 per month right now. So 13 months running in the bank team of six as they look to scale again, building Jiva.ai, helping healthcare providers get into their data, pull a signal from noise faster. Manny, thanks for taking us to the top. Thanks so much for the time. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at NathanLacka.com 
forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right, I'll be in the comments. See ya.